this sucks. Hi everyone, this is the OneFindy CNC machine. I've had it for a month or so and have been fairly pleased so far. I chose this machine because of several features not found on other entry-level CNC machines. One of those features is that it has a CPU integrated within the controller, so it doesn't need to be connected to a separate computer while cutting. The controller is powered by a Raspberry Pi microcomputer that includes HDMI video, touchscreen control, and Wi-Fi connectivity. So you can not only send G-code files to the machine over Wi-Fi, but you can also jog the machine, adjust settings, monitor progress on a webcam, and pause operations from any computer or other device on the network. This is really neat, but there was only one problem. I couldn't get the Wi-Fi to work. Well, I did get it to connect once, but not reliably. I had a hunch that my problem was due to a poor Wi-Fi signal. My CNC machine is in the far corner of the garage, and my Wi-Fi access point is in the house in the living room, a line of sight distance of less than 30 meters. Other devices have no trouble connecting in the garage and beyond, but I couldn't get the Onefinity to reliably connect. A few things might contribute to this. It could be interference from the nearby variable frequency drive or the mains power supply. The Raspberry Pi does have an onboard Wi-Fi antenna that has been known to be relatively weak, but still, the antenna in my phone should be smaller and it still gets perfect signal. The problem, I think, is the controller enclosure itself. Just like the machine, it's more robust than you would expect. The bottom and sides are made from a single massive aluminum extrusion, and the top and ends are 3mm anodized aluminum plate. It's a solid metal box that provides excellent protection to the electrical components inside. The problem, though, is that it acts like a Faraday cage in blocking radio signals, including Wi-Fi. A Faraday cage is an enclosure made of conductive material that acts to block or neutralize electromagnetic waves. It does this through the skin effect. This graphic shows a conductive box with positive and negative charges evenly distributed over the surface. If the box is placed in an electric field, the positive and negative charges will redistribute themselves to align with the external field. This redistribution of charges, though, creates an induced electric field within the box that acts to cancel out the external field. So the net effect inside the box is near zero. A similar thing happens with magnetic fields involving induced eddy currents in the conductive material of the box. So, in simple terms, an electromagnetic signal, such as Wi-Fi, can't get inside an enclosed metal box. So how come some people are able to connect their Onefinity CNC to Wi-Fi? Well, that's because the controller box isn't completely solid. There are several holes in the metal for cooling, or for mounting switches, or for cable connections, and some signal is able to get through. The wavelength of 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi is about 12 centimeters. Generally, an opening larger than one-tenth of the wavelength, in this case 1.2 centimeters, will allow the wave to re-radiate inside the enclosure, albeit at a lesser strength. So yes, the Raspberry Pi can get Wi-Fi inside the controller box, but it must be a strong signal to start with. If you operate it in an area of marginal signal, like me, it might not be able to maintain a reliable connection. So how can I get a stronger Wi-Fi signal inside the controller box? The manufacturer recommendation is to use a Wi-Fi repeater to boost the signal nearby the CNC machine. That would likely work, but requires hardware upgrades to the network itself without really addressing the core problem. There are USB ports on the Raspberry Pi. I could install a USB Wi-Fi adapter and connect that way, but that would require a firmware change to recognize the port, and it would prevent the USB slot from being used by something else. Besides, nerds like me will not have as much fun with a plug-and-play solution. What I'm going to do is to add an external Wi-Fi antenna to the Raspberry Pi. On the back side of the Pi, this little white box is the Wi-Fi radio output. You can follow the small trace with a couple 0 ohm resistors that leads to the onboard antenna on the other side of the board. Right next to this, there is a space with solder pads that mysteriously is the right size for a UFL connector. Now, I haven't been able to figure out why the Pi has space for this as a part of the board design without actually including a connector already in place. It may have been there for testing purposes, where the final board was only certified to use the onboard antenna. Whatever the case, 
the plan is to add a UFL connector here and then connect it to the radio module instead of the existing antenna. Now, just a quick note, I'm pretty good at tinning wires and soldering through hole components, but I've never soldered anything even remotely close to this small before. So this is definitely stepping outside my comfort zone for a bit of an experiment. But that's where growth happens, right? Anyways, the worst that can happen is that I damage the Raspberry Pi, for which replacements are readily available. To give me a better chance of success, I bought the smallest tips available for my soldering iron, as well as some ultra-fine 0.3mm diameter solder. Instead of a microscope, I'll just be using my iPhone camera for 6x magnification. This was much more difficult than I anticipated. First, I used a knife to scrape away some of the masking, and expose a patch of the ground plane. Then I went to tin the pads with solder. I felt like I wasn't getting enough heat, and I think I really should have used a larger tip for this part. Next, I held the UFL connector in place and soldered it on. Now, this took two tries, as I broke the first connector when testing the mechanical connection, which did not pass the test, but I eventually got a connector in place. Then I removed one of the zero ohm resistors to disconnect the onboard antenna. The last step was to connect the new antenna trace to the radio module, and I did this using a messy blob of solder to make the connection. I tested the ground and antenna leads and found that I had separate continuity in both. The last step was to use some epoxy to shield the nearby through hole pin from the serial connection. This pin is sitting at a positive 2.2 volts and would easily short to the ground if the antenna connector rotated. I made sure to spread some of the epoxy around the UFL connector to ensure a better mechanical bond. After the epoxy cured, I located a suitable place in the controller to mount the antenna. Everything was put back together and powered up. The hack worked, and I've since had a flawless Wi-Fi signal. The antenna I use has a gain of 8 dBi in an omnidirectional pattern. Now, this hack will change the broadcast parameters of the Raspberry Pi, and you should measure the signal to make sure you stay compliant with FCC regulations. I, uh, definitely did that. This project was successful, but I wouldn't recommend it unless you're familiar with soldering microscopic surface mount components. If I were to do it again, I would probably want to use solder paste and a hot air setup. Perhaps the far more simple solution to this problem is to not enclose the Raspberry Pi in a metal box in the first place. I haven't tested it, but I imagine that just replacing one of the flat panels on the controller box with a fiberglass or thermoplastic part would definitely increase the Wi-Fi signal. Perhaps this is something that could be considered on the manufacturing side of the Onefinity team. For existing machine owners, making a retrofit panel would be easy given that you already have a CNC machine. Anyways, I hope you learned something from this video. I know I certainly did. Thanks for watching.